We are now joined by UFC welterweight Matt Brown. Matt, thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. We'll take our first questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Your line is open. Hey, Matt. It feels Thanks. like it feels like people have been talking about this fight forever. How does it feel for you to finally be days away from getting in there with Carlos? It feels like I'm days away from getting into a fight. So doesn't really the opponent doesn't really change anything. You've trained to fight him in 2013, then again in 2018. How has the training and strategy for him as an opponent changed over the years, if at all? Um, I don't even barely remember those camps, to be honest. Like I'm worried, or I'm I'm focused on where I'm at right now, and I'm in a good place right now, and uh, I feel great, and I'm gonna go in there and do some big things on Saturday. You've been in there with just about everybody in the welterweight division who's been a big name. Carlos is going to be another one. Are there still guys that you're looking to add to your resume, or is it just about taking who they give you? Uh, we'll go fight by fight, man. Right now, I'm focused on this fight. We'll worry about that um, maybe Sunday. When people see you on the bill, they know that it's going to be a good show. What does it mean for you to get the platform, not only for the first card with fans back, but also you get to put on a show on the ABC network here in the U.S.? And as more people get to see the skills that I built and more people get to see me uh, beat up with Carlos. Hey, thank you, Matt. Good luck. We'll go next to Alistair Bishop with MMA Republic. Your line is open. Matt, how are you, sir? Very good. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, first one off the bat, Matt, it's obviously been many a many a year with the promotion. Uh, firstly, what motivates you at the moment at this point in your career to keep on going and get out of bed and put yourself through all the grueling training and nutrition and all that's required? Uh, well, I love all that stuff. So that's not even hard to do. But my main motivation is my kids, man. And, um, you know, that's easily uh, my biggest inspiration. You know, I want to show them you can do anything you want to do, man, with hard work and commitment and dedication. Fantastic. And how much would you say, or, or what would you say has changed most about MMA in, in your very long career? Um, it, I think just bigger, you know, I think that's the biggest thing. There's more athletes, there's more, um, like a more diverse set of fighters, I guess. Some more challenges out there. Awesome. Um, looking back, if you go a little bit forward and a little bit back to, to look over your career as a whole, how, how important does, does having a W over someone like Carlos, uh, Carlos Condit have for you? Is that an important factor for you, or is it just another fight? Uh, it'd be a good feather in the cap, that's for sure. But, you know, every fight's big, man. Every fight's the biggest fight. So, uh, you know, to me, he's another guy standing in front of me. Um, he just unfortunately got me at a bad time, man. Like, I'm, uh, I'm feeling the best that I've ever felt. I think my skills are coming together better than they've ever come together. I'm dialed in. I'm sharp. I'm on point. So, uh, it's going to be a great night. Fantastic. Obviously, you're someone in, in, in quite a great uh, position to give youngsters uh, or future generations of, of MMA athletes some advice. So, so what would be your key point of advice to youngsters on the rise? Mm, I guess it would be dependent. Yeah, everybody would, be, would need some different advice. It would depend on where they're at in their career, what they're doing right now. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of factors. Uh, it's, a, it's a it's not a simple question to answer, but it's uh, very case dependent. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you. We'll go next to Sumik Dada with Sports Kita. Your line is open. Hey, Matt. Uh, happy belated birthday, and I hope you're doing well. Yeah, thank you. So right off the bat, uh, you mentioned in the past that when you first fought in an empty arena, it kind of threw you off. But how does it feel to know that the fans will be back in attendance for this event? Um, you know, it threw me off, but I think I let it throw me off. And this time around, I've already put in my mind, I'm not letting anything throw me off. 
So uh, someone like you who has been around in the game for a while, you've reached that veteran level status, and I think the same could be said for Carlos Condit as well. Personally, what do you think of this matchup? Uh, I think he's a perfect guy uh, to be standing across the octagon from me to uh, for me to showcase all my abilities, all my skills, and everything I've been working on. So the uh, last time one of your fights went to a decision was way back in 2015, which was eight fights ago against Johnny Hendricks. That being said, could we expect another finish from you this weekend? Most likely. Um, I think I'm going to finish him, um, but... Who knows? You can't predict a fight. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, they might dominate him, whether it's a finish or not. It's be a matter of, I guess, how tough he is. Uh, last question from me. At the age of 40, you're still going strong in the octagon. What keeps Matt Brown going at this age, and what is your prime source of motivation? I think it's really about my kids, man. You know, that's really what my whole life revolves around, more so than anything else. So um, inspiring them, motivating them, making them uh, letting them watch their dad go out there and, and do great things and showing them that they can do great things with just a lot of hard work and, and motivate and commitment. Uh, thank you for your time and good luck, for, good luck for your fight this weekend. Absolutely. We'll go next to Jordan Ellis with Low Kick MMA. Your line is open. Hi, Matt. I just want to get your opinions on um, Condit's last performance. Obviously, he snapped that long losing streak. And Did you see it and what did you make of it? Uh, you're cutting out. I couldn't understand you. Sorry. Um, I just want to get your opinion on uh, Condit's last performance. You know, obviously he snapped a long losing streak, and um, I just want to see if you saw the fight and what did you make of it? Uh, I saw the fight. Um, yeah, I thought he looked pretty good, a little sharper than he had. Um, thought he had the right opponent in front of him uh, for him to be able to fight the way that he fought. Um, I'm not that guy, though. And on fight night, what what um what version of Condor are you expecting? You know, obviously he, he doesn't appear to be at, in his peak right now. But what what version are you expecting? Of course, I'm expecting the best Carlos Condor. I think he's going to train hard and he's going to be prepared for me. I mean, yeah, you know, again, I'm not these other guys, man. You know, these guys they're going to train hard for someone like me. They know what I'm bringing to the table. They're going to train hard. Um, but it doesn't matter what version uh, of Condit comes out there. Um, you know, I'm coming out myself, the best uh, uh, best Matt Brown that you've ever seen. So what what does it matter what Carlos Condit brings? And just finally, um, Diego Sanchez is looking for a retirement fight an opponent. I just wondered if you've got any interest in, in potentially running back with him. If he wants to, not. Okay, well, thanks for, thanks for your time. We'll go next to Omer Mert with Esport. Your line is open. Hello, Matt. How are you? Very good. Matt, MMA changing every day, but you are still here. How does it make you feel? Um, I don't have a certain feeling towards it, I guess. Uh, I just do me, man. I go in every day and try to get 1% better than I was yesterday. Uh, so I don't have a, uh, I guess I don't have a feeling as to how it feels. I mean, this is what I do, man. And it's what I love doing. And I'm just, I feel very blessed that I've been able to do it for so long. And uh, my brain's still functioning and my heart's still beating and uh, still going strong. Are you satisfied with your workouts you done uh, during the pandemic period? Do you think it's enough for this opponent? Uh, yeah, of, of course, yeah. Um, I feel great, man. I feel better than I've ever felt. I think everything's coming together very good right now, and um, I'm very happy with where I'm at, and my preparation was very good and on point, and I'm dialed in, I'm sharp, and I can't wait to get out there on Saturday. Thank you. Good luck on Saturday, Matt. Thank you. I will take our final questions from Cote Cruz with Ford One MMA. Your line is open. Mr. Brown, can you hear me? Yes, sir. How are you doing? Good to talk to you. Thank you for your time. 
Yeah, no problem. There's a lot of politeness between you and Carlos. It feels though like a little bit of a tense state, state of calm. You're both first competitors. Uh, what do you attribute this to? Do you respect Carlos as an opponent? Uh, of course I respect Carlos. You know, I, I've been a big fan of his. He's one of my favorite fighters, man. I love watching him fight. I always cheer for him when he's fighting. Um, it's just unfortunately for him, he's got to deal with me this weekend. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, after I beat him up, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to be sad in the back that I beat him up so bad. But um, I'm okay with that. It's part of the business, I guess, right? Um, how have you felt during your stay in Abu Dhabi? What are your impressions about Fight Island in general? Well, so far, I've seen every piece of the hotel about 20 times. So I don't have a lot of impressions to give you on that, to be honest. I see. Uh, well, during your preparation for this fight, you had the chance to work with Dorian Price, Mickey Gall, AJ Dobson. We even saw you with UFC Hall of Famer Mark Coleman. What is like on the daily with that crew? I love all those guys, man. They're all great people. Everybody brings everybody up. And, um, of course, Coleman, man, he's the best motivator out there, man. I love that guy. Yeah, he's a legend, and he's a legendary motivator. So, yeah, a good crew around me, good people. Uh, everybody's feeling good, feeling strong. So, it's like I said, it's all coming together, man. Well, we know this fight can be could be complete chaos if you keep it standing up, but your opponent has a very sneaky ground game as well. How do you see it going if you end up on the ground? Do you feel you have the advantage there? I have the advantage everywhere in this fight. Well, you've become an entrepreneur in this stage of your career as well. You've opened a mortal martial arts center in Ohio. You, you have now your own brand of coffee, Mortal Coffee. You're all around the place, man. What is it like to balance the business ventures and the training? Do you see this business as part of something bigger for the future? Yeah, of course, I want my business to grow and be some part of something bigger. But uh, it's all about just having the right people around you to help out, man, delegate properly. And um, that way you can focus on what you got to focus on. I see. Final question for me. Uh, what do you say to the fans that feel that you might be close to retirement after this fight? Well, it might be. Who knows? Um, I'm focused on one day right now. I'm focused on Saturday. Uh, we'll worry about what comes next uh, after that. Well, sir, I'm excited for this fight. It's been a long time coming. So thank you for your time. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Matt. You're all set. Thank you.